that right there that is what you're looking for in the used rv marketplace 6950 pounds this is a salem bunkhouse big super slide private rear bunk room with closing doors for both the front master and rear bunk rooms everybody gets their own little privacy it's got a big camp kitchen swing out bumper grill power jacks power awning partridge in a pear tree power everything <laughs> um and it is physically like potentially the cleanest rv i think i've ever seen everything gleams the folks took amazing care of this to the tune of they literally hand vacuumed the bunk mattresses before bringing it here for sale i've been doing this for 12 to 13 years now i'd have to double check the math i've never and i have i mean never once have i seen somebody vacuum the bunks if that doesn't tell you the story about this one, I really don't know what does. I've located three things I guess we could uh, call defects or points of concern, two of which are so piddly I think it's almost not even worth time reporting them. One of them uh, I, I think you really deserve to know about. It has been addressed. It's not an issue currently. Let's jump inside and start right there and then start working our way around. This is beautiful. And I'm going to start by kind of giving us a throw. Uh, a throw? A C60, yeah, a slow 360, there we go, gosh, I'm an idiot sometimes, of the living room, just so that you have an idea of the uh, affected area that we're talking at, or talking about here. Now, it's something that visually uh, can't really be detected, and it's in a, not, a, it's technically walkable space, but it's not in, like, a, uh, the kind of space where you're actually going to be walking through the RV. Just in front of that slide, between the front slide fascia and the entertainment center. I stood myself way back in that corner to try to get a nice picture to show everybody everything. And I noticed that there was a spot here that was soft. Now, standing on one foot, I can, oop, hold on, let me get that back on camera. <laughs> Losing my balance. I can stand on it. It's fine. There's a spot from like here forward where it's got a soft spot and it's crispy, but it's still load bearing. Um, I spoke with our consignment officer and I said, okay, can you, were you were, were you aware of this? And he says, yes. Previous owner disclosed that. They had, uh, I believe, something to do with a uh, the, the seal on the front of their slide. Got it addressed as quickly as they could. It unfortunately affected that area. I noticed it did creep into the bedroom to just the slightest of degrees. And that's the only significant thing I can find. It's stuffed up in a corner of the RV where, frankly, I can't imagine anyone like standing there doing jumping jacks and making an issue out of it or anything like that. So, if you can deal with that and save a bunch of money on a late model, very nicely kept used RV, you're going to love this here. I, I like all the roller shades here through the living room, really blocking out the sun when you need it. Extra large, true Udinette. That will fold down into a big sleeper when you need. And that is not daylight sneaking in above the slide. It's almost crazy to think that they're not using blue lights above the slide. A lot of Forest River stuff does that. I have... I don't know. I've never been a super fan of the neon Labatt blue lights going on in a lot of RVs. I have always respected the fact that Wildwood Salem, dang it, used. Uh, I, yeah. By the way, we are a uh, we're a Wildwood dealer at Haylet RV. Um, so Salem and Wildwood, they're literally the same thing. If if I slip a couple times and I screw up the name, I'm sorry. It's just it's reflexive. It's probably going to happen again. Quick note before we move on though. Solid surface counters here in the kitchen, which is kind of nice. But I think it's time we've done, we, instead of a 360, I've done a 720 in the living room. It's time that we are actually start opening stuff up and taking a peek at the storage, right? Because where today's Wildwoods have that Versa Lounge, no Salem. See, I told you I'd end up doing that. I don't, okay, well, we're going to start calling this the Sildwood Whalem series. Salem and Wildwood, same camper, you get the idea. They have the Versa Lounge of storage below. You see that sofa situation right there, kind of as a, a little bit of a predecessor, I think, to the modern Versa Lounge. Now, I told you I would point out a couple very minor things as we went through here. It, it almost feels... I don't know, unnecessary to report this, but I noticed like this piece of trim was just a little gappy and wiggly. Like that's, that's about how Nick picky overall I've, I've had to be in this one, like inside the stove, the microwave, the fridge, we saw the, <laughs> again, the bunks have been vacuumed. I, do I need to remind everybody? <laughs> that's just not the kind of thing you see 
every day. I haven't really seen a traditional pantry, although below the entertainment center, I think, could absolutely work as a pantry. Well, you've got that sort of mini across the bathroom hallway space. It could be linens, pantry, toiletries, a little bit of clothes, dresser space, whatever you need, really. So uh, I mentioned that there were three items that I detected on the RV. One was the little piece of trim in the kitchen. One was that floor spot. The third one is the bathroom door. Sometimes doesn't like to shut. I think that striker plate probably just needs adjusting because I've noticed it's got a little play into it. If you give it a good, um, you know, whack, how's your father? Uh, well, you can uh, you can get it to latch, but I don't I don't want people smashing it constantly. Uh, I don't think there's really anything major wrong there. Now this doesn't have a skylight, but it is a six foot nine ceiling, which means if you are my size you can actually still stand in here and not hit your head in it. I'm 6'2", 6'3", I'm wearing my shoes right now, so I'd technically be a little bit smaller if uh, I was walking around in here. But I, I wanted people to get to see that because a lot of times when you see no skylight, you're thinking, you know, am I gonna actually be able to fit in this thing? Yes, I, I do believe that you definitely will. And uh, if, if you are a little, I don't know if you know, I'm a little thick around the midsection lately. I've been putting on pandemic pounds for going on two solid years now, and I gotta get back to it. I had uh, an unwitch from Jimmy John's instead of a sandwich from Jimmy John's yesterday, so I guess you could say I'm, you know, making an effort. <laughs> now, this this is more, I think, than just a bunk room. Can it function as a triple bunk house? Yes. You've got the built-in ladder there. Uh, now, that folds out. I've got it retracted currently, so that you can just kind of see the, uh, the storage space that you had there. But um, over here, this dinette could fold down into a sleeper if need be. And I think that that is just begging you to turn this into some kind of office space. And of course, you've got a flip up bunk above, which as we saw, the folks quite, quite literally vacuum cleaned this thing. Oh, and by the way, you do have a sliding privacy door closing that off. And if I slowly spin you around right here, try not to make you motion sick or anything like that you'll notice that you do have a swinging privacy door for the master bedroom as well now we've got central air in the ceiling central heat in the floor uh keep you comfortable like i said spring summer fall uh we'll talk a little bit more about it outside if you're going to try to do some extended season camping the rv wasn't specifically built for that purpose but it doesn't mean that it couldn't actually function reasonably well that way as long as you have reasonable expectations cool little thing over here this is actually a little laundry chute you can put a, a basket down there and you're actually looking at the outside baggage door which i don't have latched currently which is why you're seeing daylight if i actually latched it you wouldn't see it i don't want anyone to think that there's a problem there this is the original factory mattress uh it is a camp queen you might notice that they do leave you some room if you wanted to put a true queen in here you could one of the things I actually like here also is that they, they have like this uh, TV enclosure right there. Just sometimes it's the little things that make a difference. And then over here, like you notice beside the TV area in the living room was blank space. That's because there's a big chunk of dresser storage in here as well as easy lift storage below the bed that's also wide open, which I think is kind of cool. If you wanted to do something like um, put some totes down there or like a little dog bed or something, I think that could work pretty well, don't you? And a look with the slide closed in storage or road mode kind of reveals if you make a travel sandwich stop and you just need to get in here to get to the lunch beat and get to your loaves of bread or whatnot, this could work. That giant dinette just straight blocks the bathroom and, and really, frankly, the bunks from being accessed. I, I suppose you could theoretically lift a kid to get back there. Something to keep in mind, though, is this is a rack and pinion slide out. One of the benefits of a rack and pinion slide is that let's say you only want to open it partially like I'm doing right here. And I don't know, we'll just stop right about there. It doesn't hurt the slide to do that. Some slide systems like Schwintex, you don't want to do that. So if you crack the slide just a bit, which took, what, 10 seconds, I could get back here. I could get back there. So if it's at a storage facility, you need to pack up the clothes or something like that, you could make it work. Now, I don't recommend doing this in the rain. This uh, slide is not fully sealed when only partially opened. 
Uh, so you really only want to do it in the right weather for the right reasons. And you don't want to use the slide when it's closed or partially open like this because it's not properly supported. Maybe that helps you. Maybe it doesn't. I just thought I'd share. Outside here, we're going to start below the master bed. You notice that the, the back half of the bed, it does go down into the pasture if you need to access it. But remember, you do have that kind of uh, like separation partition support wall right there. So it's not like it's just the beds hanging over a whole bunch of nothing effectively. And once again, absolute compliments to the previous owners. Down here at Advantage One RV, we, uh, these are RVs that we are selling on behalf of their owners. And it really kind of surprises me uh, and often disappoints me the condition of the RV in terms of like cleanliness when people bring uh, things in for us to sell. A lot of folks want us to sell them for absolute top dollar and they ask top dollar for them, uh, but not everybody takes care of them. But like, look at the sunshine gleaming off of that right there. Wow, like that every square inch nook and cranny like i've opened every cabinet by now i've opened every drawer i've looked inside outside upside down of this thing and it all looks stellar and just to make sure that we're setting the best expectations possible i want to make sure that you uh, you realize this was made before the salem wildwood group started that uh heated enclosed accessibility however one of the cool things about these is that they haven't had exposed piping for many years. Uh, actually, the way that they kind of do things here is the tanks are exposed, yes, but all of the piping uh, and the fittings, which are truly the weak point uh, in you know the, the, the freezing kind of uh, concerns and conditions, those are actually up inside of the floor, uh, like with the, uh, the heat ducting and the insulation. I'm not telling you that makes us a magic four seasons camp or anything like that. But if you're going to do some extended season camping, or if you're like, you're, you're going stir crazy, it's been a really cold spring and you're trying to get out as soon as you can. If it's gonna dip down, you know, a little bit, say into the 20s overnight and come back tomorrow, you shouldn't really have to worry about it here. Now we saw the, the well, actually, I don't know if you're, you are, I don't want to assume this because I look at campers every day. So if you're already aware of this, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm boring you, but that, that big leather thing right there, that's a bumper mount grill. It's on a swing arm so it can swing right around here to the camp kitchen. And by not needing to build the grill in, they were able to keep the countertop lower. And where I like that is not just for countertop space, but that is a real sink with an actual drain. And what I like about it is that it's at like um, chest belly level, depending on who it is. It's not way up here like a lot of them are you can actually use that now you've got dad's medicine cabinet there you can you can uh put some of those hug juice barrels for the kids in the uh the lower shelves those also make good evening mixers uh i'm not saying i'm just saying <laughs> um this is one of the things i always actually really liked about how they did their camp kitchen above this galvanized steel countertop just that extra drawer kind of hiding under one of the bunks back there drawers are, are are very handy obviously you have them in the kitchen for a reason why not in the outside kitchen it's always kind of baffled me how rare that seems to be in a lot of campers and this is i think potentially one of my favorite parts of the rv i'm a big fan of camp kitchens i i just uh, when i go camping i like to spend my time outside i don't want to be stuck indoors in the rv all the time i want to be outdoors with my family with my kid with my lawn chair and with a drink in my hand, having a good time. And if that sounds good to you, give us a call down here at Advantage One RV. And that sign reveal landed pretty darn nice. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, not bad for just shooting from the hip for a moment there. But if you need financing, if you have a trade or anything, you need hitching, you need to see how this thing works, if it's your first time RVing, give us a call. We'll get you taken care of. We're family owned and operated. We'd sure love the chance to work with you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.